Hello dear friends. I come to you today from the backyard of Apavia in Romania with somewhat of a heavy heart. This morning I learned of the passing of Dr. Miles Monroe and eight other people, his wife and two pilots and some other ministers. And immediately I, I I felt a sense of loss, I felt uh, grief, and uh, wondered how could we lose a, a giant of a man of this caliber. <clears throat> and then, you know, the thoughts come up, you know, who did this, who was at fault, oh, what happened, and, and so on and so forth. And as the facts begin to come out, you know, we understand that the um, his private plane uh, with uh, nine people on board, as they were approaching a landing, um, went low under some clouds and uh, struck a construction crane uh, that was in a nearby construction site, and immediately the the plane uh, blew up and probably killed everybody on board immediately and then of course plummeted to the ground and uh, there's nothing but uh, scrap metal there and nine precious people. But rather than focus on what happened, which is necessary to prevent things in the future, but the question comes, what do we do now? What can we do now? What would please God and what would be in Dr. Munn's rose heart? And I think he was very clear during his lifetime that he was here to prepare others, to help others be prepared to be all that they can be. And so to honor God and to honor his memory and the work that he leaves behind I thought in this vein, everything that we have achieved, everything that we have done, uh, every good thing, every uh, whatever we have done to my, it's it's our achievement. But what we are capable of doing, what God has put within us, the gifts, the abilities, the talents, uh, the intelligence, the creativity, the faith, the understanding. All of that that we have not yet applied or done is our potential. And usually our potential far exceeds our achievement. And one reason is, is because it's built upon the foundation of our achievement. And I, I believe that Dr. Monroe uh, somehow was running a race, a relay race. He had a baton in his hand and he was running with the baton with fully, full intent that he was going to pass that baton onto somebody else. I'd like to extend my hand to reach that baton but I think he has more than one in his hand for each one of us to, to be all that we can be. We don't have to be better than other people, but we can be all that God has put, given us the potential to become inwardly in our unitedness to the Father through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit and also in our life's work. And the Apostle Paul uh, spoke about our life's work and he talked about the quality, not just the quantity, but the quality. He said, you know, we don't work in wood, hay, and stubble. Temporary, burned up. But gold, silver, and precious stones refined by fire, refined by heat. 
and some of us have been through a refining process. And Jesus said the secret to that kind of, of uh, service, ministry, is by abiding in him. Did he not say, he that abideth in me, not run helter and skelter with every whim or a passing fancy, but he that abideth in me and I in him, two things. Number one, they'll bring forth much fruit. That's quantity. And then he spoke about, spoke about quality and the fruit should remain. Not like... Uh, remain for just this lifetime, but fruit that will last for eternity. Every person who is one, uh, redeemed for the kingdom of God is for eternity. Everyone that turns their heart and their faith and their trust into Jesus Christ, whoever believes in me will not perish but have eternal life. That's quality work and I pray God that he helped me and may include you help us to take the passing the tragic passing of our brother Miles Monroe and apply it to our lives that we may apply ourselves unto wisdom thanks for listening may God bless you I'm your friend Roy. Until next time, goodbye.